time to make something. But where do ideas come from? Let me explain. Some ideas are the result of scientific discovery. Other times, ideas are the result of experimentation. Most ideas come from breaking other ideas apart and putting them together in ways that are unexpected. The results are available for perception and can be altered again to convey further messages. Ideas can come to us through all the senses. Touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing all contribute to our promotional creations. Sometimes we can make a good idea last for a long time. But eventually, even good ideas become stale and uninteresting. No one knows what it's like to feel these feelings. So if you're ready, let's take your creative perspective to the next level. It's a journey of intellect. It's a journey of wonderment. It's a journey that begins at your desk with your computer, your stapler, and your calendar featuring puppies and kittens of the world. Let us begin with a clean slate. Dave up there is having his office redecorated. That'll teach him for working late. Ho, ho, ho. He's in the stairs! Ooh, that's a fresh pit. For all day protection, choose right guard. What we take in at our desk has a direct effect on what we put out as creative professionals. Let's start by making sure you have appropriate lighting. If you have fluorescent lighting, you probably also have headaches. Maybe you're also grinding your teeth at night, or you're just an irritable pain in the ass. You see, fluorescent lights are turning on and off at 120 times a second. Imagine blinking 120 times a second. That's not very relaxing. We suggest getting rid of them altogether and replacing them with incandescent lights. Incandescents have a continuous source and are easier on the eyes. They create a more comfortable working environment. And we could all use a little more comfort. Try and find lamps with dimmers. Keep a few different colored bulbs on hand or add candles to your arsenal of lights. Being able to shape your lighting will help alter your imagination. Looking for specifics? We suggest the volcano candle. It has a lid that extinguishes the flame so you don't light the place on fire. Cut! We got it. Douse him! Yeah. Douse him. Ace, I tried to fill the bucket, but the faucet inside's broken, so, uh, I've got nothing. Really? I have an American Standard faucet at my house, and I've never had any problems. My American Standard faucet's great. It's washerless, never binds, never drips, anything. Hmm. Try creating something with all the lights on. Now try working in the dark. What can you come up with? Ow! Oh! Oh! No, no, no! What the hell? Ah! Ow! Is it you? Guess where I've been today. Everything on your desk should have a purpose. Your creations are the result of a thought process. The layout of your desk should be too. First, there's your computer. Laptop, flat screen, dinosaur. There's no judgments here. On your computer screen, it's nice to add a mantra. Words to live by. Nothing too distracting. Maybe something that summarizes your goals. Oh, that's a nice one. You should be a copywriter. A mantra like that will impress your boss. Oh, here he comes right now. Hello. Oh, uh, hi, John. I'm just interrupting to instill some fear and to humiliate Bob here. OK. Uh, oh, say, John, while you're here, um, can I uh, pop by your office, uh, say, around five-ish to kiss your ass and tell it the soda cracker white? Sure. Uh, Bill, do you want to shove your tongue up my ass and give it a few twirls? Absolutely. I'd give you a hand job in a stationary closet if it meant a good review. Great. Well, carry on, you overpaid jackasses. Go to hell. Since your computer is often your most important tool and occupies most of your attention, it's important to carefully dress the immediate periphery. 
Objects surrounding the computer should either be neutral or they should act as some kind of positive reinforcement. Maybe one side of your computer has a photo of that boat you have your eye on. Perhaps on the other side, there's a picture of Morgan Freeman, world's greatest film narrator. Or maybe not. Ah, a Balinese money god. Nice. That reminds me of my own Eastern conquests. So, you've set up the area around your computer. Computers are fun, aren't they? But we should never forget about our analog heritage. Designate one drawer to analog implements. Make something out of wire. Paint or glue something together. Ponder shapes by blowing bubbles. Or building bricks. When things are analog, your battles seem more subdued. If you don't have room for analog storage, you should at least have a sketchbook handy. Find a cozy spot, make yourself comfortable, and let the ideas flow. You never know what might come out of this organic process. Need some positive karma? Why not use your powers for good, like Superman or Dr. Phil? Donate your talents to a cause that you believe in. Every day, 3,000 Americans start smoking. A third of them will die from it. How do you like the odds? Whoa, I guess I picked the wrong week to start smoking. On your desk, there should also be an area I like to call the emotional oasis. This could include photos of your friends, a picture of a distant cousin, or a souvenir from a past voyage. For a brief moment, you can feel peace and joy you can put those feelings of comfort into your work. That funny picture you have of your grandpa sleeping in his chair, <laughs> it will stick with you forever. Stuck on you I've Got this feeling down deep in my soul That I just can't lose Guess I'm on my way Needing a friend And the way I feel now I guess I'll be with you till the end Guess I'm on my way With Travelocity you can choose your exact seat before you even reach the airport Nifty Travelocity Hello world The emotional oasis can provoke many emotions like humor, sentimentality and love Oh, look, a picture of your wife. Remember how you met?
Your desk should also have an area dedicated to inspiration. Some form of bulletin board works best, but if you don't have one, tape up your inspirational images. Oftentimes, a handful of key images are all you need. A man in an egg, spheres floating in space, a woman wearing feathers, interesting. What are you working on? I'm going back to the start. Ideally, above your computer, on the wall, there should be an image I call the mental maze. The mental maze is a piece of art or image that is so complicated that there is always a discovery when looking at it. It provides an inspiration more universal than for your immediate projects, and like the fish that got away or Bigfoot, it keeps the quest for the unknown alive in your heart and in your brain. That desire for discovery is something that carries on in your work. How long does it take you to discover what this is an advertisement for? What about this spot? Can you figure out what this is an advertisement for? Sound is important to your mental state, too. You might disagree until you work next to someone playing Creed or Yanni. Yikes. Beyond thinking of music, though, silence has a sound. Room tone is the monotonous drone of a given room. Most room tone is predictable and uninspiring. Hear for yourself. That fan isn't helping your creations. You need to conduct your own room tone. Here are some recommends. Heiko. Autecker. Biosphere. Brian Eno. Hazard. And of course, the next.
Play your mix through speakers, not headphones, and replace your boring room tone with an imaginative soundscape. Try using songs that you're not familiar with, or try others that are ambient in nature or which lack a common structure. Your new room tone should be soothing and abrasive, fast and slow, all in the same mix. But creating an arena for your moods and controlling your moods are two different things. You use guidance sound to directly provoke an emotional inspiration. In the big rock candy By listening to specific music through headphones, bright. you become more in tune Where with your creations. And you sleep Let's say you're working on a spot for Burger King. Where the box cars all you're listening are. to the Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack, and you're flipping through a book of David LaChapelle photographs. What might you come up with? When my belly starts a rumbling, uh, and I'm jonesing for a treat, I close my eyes for a big surprise, the tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch. I love the tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch The breasts they grow on trees And streams of bacon ranch dressing Flow right up to your knees There's tumbleweeds of bacon And cheddar paves the streets Folks don't front you cause you got the juice There's a train of ladies coming with a nice caboose Never get in trouble, never need an excuse That's the tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch I love the tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch No one tells you to behave, behave. Your wildest fantasies come true Dallas cheerleaders give you shaves Red onions make you laugh instead And french fries grow like weeds You get the veg all day All the lotto tickets paid As a king who wants you to have it your way That's the tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch Somewhere on your desk, you should have a library of textures, what I like to call a petting zoo. This is a place to distract your tactile senses. By stimulating your sense of touch, you can add dimensions to or distract your normal thought process. If you don't think this works, take for example, driving with a cell phone. Oh my god, did you see the OC last night? I know, wasn't it amazing? Can you believe Marissa shot that guy? What do you think's gonna happen next season? I mean, with Kirsten in rehab, and Caleb dead, and... Oh. Come on, lady. Come on! I'm at a stop sign. I gotta go. Come on! Why would you want to distract your tactile senses? Again, you're trying to provoke a new thought process. You see, ideas bounce around in your head. Your thought process might be shaped like a triangle, or maybe a hexagon, or maybe... Is that a cow? By adding the element of distraction, you can often get out of your own head. Try holding a dried flower in your hand. Try running a glass knob down your nose. What does a cotton ball feel like across your forehead? I know just what your mama said. Always misunderstood. Gotta tell you something I saw it in your eyes I think I left your backseat Do you smell something? It's kind of a nutty smell with a hint of chocolate and brie. Oh wait, that's an old sandwich in your desk drawer. 
You should have some scent handy on your desk to provoke your sense of smell. Try using aromatherapy oils or incense to spark your imagination. Maybe burn some sage to ward off evil spirits. The man who worked at your desk last year was fired for sexual harassment. You might think, I never use those scents. Those are for hippie girls named Moonbeam or Fawn. Well, you have a point, but maybe you need them to cleanse your nasal palate. Maybe someone near you is on the microwave popcorn diet, or Shaky McShakenstein has just brewed a fresh pot of coffee. Maybe you had lunch at your desk and you can't escape the smell of leftover Chinese. Or maybe a coworker is recovering from a night of drinking or Indian food, and those smells have become a distraction. Some scents work to neutralize your work environment. You might find another scent gives you a certain energy, or you might use another scent to relax. Try looking at www.aromaweb.com. Your nose is more powerful than you might think. when you breathe. It's always good to have a little snack. Nothing that'll spoil your lunch. But studies show while snacking isn't necessarily good for you, it is nevertheless enjoyable and refreshing. I'm enjoying a mint right now. Mmm, delicious. Have some containers with snacks at your own desk. Try and find snacks for each of the taste types. Salty. Sweet, sour, bitter, and umami. Perhaps you need an atomic fireball for your afternoon jolt. Or maybe you're waiting for a project to render while enjoying a soothing caramel. Maybe you're sucking on a chocolate. It tastes sensual. Do you feel naughty? I do. On your desk, you should have a jar. It's called the Jar of Challenges. Every week you pull out a challenge from the jar and tape it to the top of your computer or pin it to your wall. You can put challenges in your coworkers' jars and they can put challenges in yours. Do you have to complete the challenge? No, but if you don't, you might as well be an accountant. The perfect man clears out of slips, jacket, Sko, bukser, skjorte, bevægelser. Her er det perfekte menneske. Her er det perfekte menneske. Vi kigger på det perfekte menneske. Vi kigger på det perfekte menneske. Put a challenge in your coworker's jar. Here's a few challenge suggestions.
It's payback time. Let's have some fun. A little plastic buddy at your desk can provoke youthful imagination. It's good to have a friend, someone who supports you, someone who's not overly critical, someone who doesn't even talk, someone who just smiles and nods. If this is too juvenile, make it an art project and create your own toy. That little fellow could rock any desk. He looks better in the nude. Let him be free. Pay tribute to your plastic buddies by including them in your work. I know you gonna dig this. I don't say much. I don't say Alize. No, I don't say Dutch. Keep your hands off until I say okay. Touch. I never come off tacky. I'm a boss exactly. I'm like a slick suit snooper fly Versace. Conversation flashy. Y'all niggas can't match. We've all been dumpster diving, but how many of us have been vault diving? A vault is a wonderful place to explore. Try exercising your skills by reappropriating a random selection from your workplace archives. By doing so, you'll inspire your coworkers and boost morale. Oh, G.I. Joe. That will be fun to remix. It's just E to the step. Just flip it, stick it, and see you later. Bye. I don't think I can do that. You better bring it. What's up with you? Hey, kids, did you happen to see a pink, uh, I want to say vinyl purse around here somewhere? Just dying to get my cigarettes. What are you talking about? I ain't nobody seen no... Damn. What? Damn. Yeah, we should totally hit it again, but I get first dibs on it. To me come on, first me nearly dead with laugh. I watch the people rush the door like a bash a choco. Fun time there, yeah. time for the bus rider. Sunshine there, yeah. a time for the bus rider. Sunshine there, yeah. a time for the bus rider. Fun time there, yeah. a time for the bus rider. No! G.I. Joe! Here is an excerpt of a film by Arthur Lipset comprised entirely of found footage. George Lucas watched this nine minute film 24 times continuously and said it had the most profound effect on him. I have found something uh, even more satisfying than that. What is it? Book of Revelations, I'll tell you that. You mean the Bible? Yes. Yeah. I believe in the return of Christ and the salvation from mortality. I don't believe in mortality. Immortality. Well, frankly, folks, there are no secrets. They're just the plain, simple, everyday facts of life. They always have been. I presume they always will be. So then why in the name of common sense can't we bring these things out into the open like intelligent people? Well, take me to a place where I'll have freedom. Yes. I'm a human being. I want to feel free. Sure. I want to feel free and do things as I please. The same things as you wanted to. You're human. Well, I'm also human. When I get on a bus, I have the feeling everybody is looking at me and that there is something wrong. If your workplace is without a vault, Try visiting www.archive.org. They have plenty of downloadable public domain movies for you to create your own found footage masterpiece. What are you doing? Checking your email? Oh, a virus. Warning, 1P, with laughter virus found. Don't worry, 
You have a Mac. And besides, it's viral, not a virus. Next up then, the Ukrainian pair, Mosienko and Bubka, going for their fourth Trojan gold. Bubka much bigger than last year, an impressive 65 kilograms. That's right, Stuart. She's like a French goose before Christmas. Lotox and chalk, a Bubka trademark. Mosienko, so at home in a golden vest. But will he go home with a golden medal? There's the spread. Oh, and there's the hoik. Now can he hold it? Can he hold it? Surely he'll get three lights. Yes, he has! Brilliant! Unbelievable scenes here. Mosienko still casting a daunting shadow across the sport of pelvic powerlifting. It's good to create a reference library of your favorite viral spots. Feel free to enjoy them at work. Humor is good for the soul and the mind. Set up a viral exchange with your friends. Share in the wealth. She's still telling me what to do. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's watch another, shall we? What a wonderful way to anoint your new desk. Look at you now. You're a creative machine. You've set up your emotional oasis. You've pondered your mental maze. Your computer periphery is motivational. Thanks to your analog drawer, you can sketch out your ideas. If you need to provoke a new thought process, delve into your petting zoo. All the tools you need to create amazing ideas are at your fingertips. Now that your mind has been pollinated, you've escaped the boundaries of the common desk. Go forth and create amazing ideas. Break on to the other side. Break on to the other side. Break on to the other side, yeah. See the curtains hanging in the window in the evening on a Friday night. A little light is shining through the window. Let me know everything's all right. Summer breeze makes me feel fine.